In today's news, Mr. Kevin Foy is a new Lions Club president. We also see escapee Sean Massacre, 28 years old, from East End being arrested and charged in the $25 million cocaine bust from back in January. Over 1,300 residents received the COVID-19 shot and thrive true vaccination initiative. And finally, 192 active cases in the USVI as the presence of the Delta variant is confirmed in the U.S. territory. And we also see Claude Skelton Klein outraged that the COI is continuing amidst the COVID-19 crisis here in the territory. All that and so much more on today's edition of 284 News. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. Welcome, everybody. It's Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. A terrific Thursday to each and every one of you. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Javon Wilson. So happy to welcome you back to 284 News out of the beautiful British Virgin Islands. Ron, I know still persons beautiful. are still beautiful. Absolutely. I know persons are challenged right now with everything that's going on. But we want to remind you, viewers, that the world over is uh, being challenged in the same way and struggling with COVID-19. So it's important that we stay united. Now, some of our summary topics for today, uh, Premier Foy has now hailed the ongoing vaccination drive through initiative a big success as over 1,000 persons were able to secure their COVID-19 vaccine so far. The Premier made uh, this announcement on VIP Let's Talk last Tuesday, where he revealed that over 1,300 persons were able to secure their shots. We also see social activists and government consultants uh, show host as well, Mr. Claude Skelton Klein, uh, now outraged that the COI is being continued amidst what's happening here in the territory as it relates to COVID-19. On his June 20th show, Skelton Klein said, and I quote, Our friends are dying, our family members are dying, our acquaintances are dying, our neighbors are dying, our healthcare services is under duress, our healthcare service practitioners and providers are overworked. We have gone as far as setting up a field hospital, converting the multi-purpose sports complex into a hospital to accommodate and care for people. And yet we have this commission of inquiry. That is just some of what's stopping our headlines today. Yes, indeed. And continuing on, the late test results causes missed flights. A health minister apologizes. He also says that the Public Health Act empowers him to pick COVID-19 testing sites. In addition to that, the airport authority has been uh, chided, the head rather of the airport's authority chided for incomplete COI submissions. And of course, we pan across to Antigua where recent announcements from the government of Antigua state that as of August 1st, all bars, restaurants, cinemas, and places of entertainment will be required to ask for proof of vaccination. Additionally, government workers who refuse to pay for the COVID-19 twice weekly test will be asked to stay at home without pay. All fully Antiguans, vaccinated Antiguans that is, will receive their laminated vaccination card from the Ministry of Health and Social Development. Jovan, the plot thickens. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we continue to examine what's going on across the region and of course what we can apply here in the Virgin yes. Islands, if at all. As we dive into today's newscast, viewers, due to the territory's current spike in COVID-19 cases, coupled with many outstanding important documents, the Commission of Inquiry will be breaking for hearings until late August as the team prepares to make a brief return to the United Kingdom. Now, this is according to a media release from the COI's Secretary Stephen Chandler, who made a disclosure on Wednesday, July 21st. Mr. Chandler said, and I quote, As the Commissioner has confirmed, the COI will not hold hearings in August, and as it is not possible to arrange hearings in respect of statutory boards and Crown land prior to the August break, as the Commissioner had hoped, the hearings earlier this week will be the last this month. The Commissioner and his team will be returning to the UK to continue the task of preparing for the forthcoming hearings. They will return to the BVI in late August to complete the hearings. It is hoped that it will be possible by then for witnesses to appear in person at our hearings room at the International Arbitration Center. The COI has, however, made arrangements uh, to allow for remote hearings should these become necessary, Chandler added. 
Now, viewers, Mr. Chandler also said that there were plans to complete some of the topics that had already commenced. However, the failure of government officials and some witnesses to provide the necessary documentations have made that task impossible at this present time. In his statement, he said, in his statement on June 2nd, 2021, the commissioner explained that given the history of inadequate and incomplete disclosure of documents and to ensure properly focused hearings, he was making requests for corporate witness statements in relation to these topics. These requests were largely addressed to ministers, but the commissioner was content for a minister to decide if a public officer should provide a statement in his or her stead. He stated, the commissioners expected the inquiry response unit, which of course is the IRU, to assist in the preparation of these documents. Now, despite having these requests made weeks before the recent rise in COVID-19 cases and multiple extensions of deadlines, in substantial part, these, st these statements, sorry, are still awaited. Whilst the commissioner is sensitive to the fact that the current COVID-19 situation in the BVI now makes it more difficult for some government departments, it is vital that the material outstanding be provided as soon as possible to enable focused hearings to resume, Chandler further added. Now, viewers, the full list of topics will be covered by the COI that includes, one, the interests held and declared by the members of the House of Assembly and elected members, two, questions arising from the position statements sub submitted by participants and others on governance and law enforcement and justice, Three, the work of the Auditor General and the Internal Auditor and the Complaints Commissioner for the composition and uh, functions of statutory boards. That's a very big one. Uh, five, the purchasing and leasing of Crown land. And finally, of course, the system under which the BVI government enters into contracts, both in general and, of course, and in relation to specific contracts. Ron, uh, the first time we heard about bringing the COI to the halt, I believe, was when social commentator and government consultant, radio host as well, Mr. Klaus yes. Kelton Klein, calling for government to pull out of the COI. We also heard some support coming from uh, Mr. Gaston Brung, of course, the chair of CARICOM, CARICOM yeah. saying that should BVI pull out, uh, the CARICOM body will stand in support. But following that, we did see the ministers in particular coming out and indeed agreeing to the fact that a lot of their time and resources that is now being divulged to the COI is now being, uh, you know, you know, it's stretched. It, yes, yeah. absolutely. And they need to be more focused on what's happening as it relates to this crisis. Not only that, I want to reflect on a very important point that was made by Mr. Skelton Klein back in January. Prime Minister of the UK, Mr. Boris Johnson, uh, just nine days before approving, uh, giving his stamp of approval on the COI in the BVI, rejected a COI in the United Kingdom under the same circumstances, saying that, listen, our efforts, our resources, everything uh, needs to be put into the management of this COVID-19 crisis, but nevertheless uh, went forward with approving the COI in the BVI. And I think one other, I think, territory-wide sentiment is to also the fact that not only are we suffering yes. with this, you know, COVID crisis, uh, we are challenged in so many ways, but also the territory is grieving the lives of so many who would have lost their lives to this virus. So those are just some of the sentiments of being echoed across the board. In addition, Jovan, of course, we would see where Governor Ranking did uh, issue an extension of six months uh, to the COI. Uh, but uh, we did a poll on our website, viewers, uh, where, believe it or not, many residents uh, are in support of the continuation of the COI despite the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, so Jovan, definitely going to be following, uh, but I do uh, agree and I could see where uh, the members of the uh, government here in the BBI are stretched as it pertains to trying to control uh, the COVID-19 crisis. Continue on, viewers, the Lions Club of Tortola BVI has elected a new president in the person of Mr. Kevin Foy, General Manager of Caribbean Sellers Limited. The transition of leadership took place this week after former president Nicola Dunkley was not able to complete her tenure as president due to unforeseen circumstances. Now, in an official statement, the club said, and I quote, There has been a recent leadership transition within the Lions Club of Tortola due to the unforeseen circumstances, and we continue to wish our former uh, president, Lion Nicola Dunkley, well in her future endeavors. 
as the former vice president, uh, she said, I was willing to step into the role uh, of president and along with our new first VP Lion, Kamika Forbes, our board and members, the Lions Club stands ready to serve the community under the theme impacting communities with kindness, one life at a time. Now the club further stated viewers, we are living in a time in the BVI where kindness and community service are most relevant than ever. And there is a need, there is a lion. Where there is a need, there is a lion. We recently assisted with the Operation Protect Each Other vaccination drive through over the weekend. And the Lions Club will continue to support the BVI community through innovative and safe projects. Further updates on our outreach will be provided through our Facebook page. Now, viewers, we caught up with the newly elected president, Mr. Kevin Foy. Here's what he had to say. I am honored to have been selected by my fellow Lion Club members to serve as the president. In our quest to continue to serve our community and impact the territory, our region, and by extension, our world in the most impact way possible, we are indeed living in unprecedented times. And I encourage each of us to contribute to our society in whatever way we can. As president, I vow and I look forward to serving the Lions Club of Tartola with vigor as we seek to do better for the Virgin Islands. The Lions Club has and will continue to be one of the key agencies that serve the BVI, giving back and assisting in various initiatives. I encourage fellow young professionals to embrace community service and consider joining one of the many service organizations in the BVI and lend their talents towards the success of their country. I take this time to offer an invitation to such persons to consider joining the Lions Club of Tartola and make positive change in these trying times. I also take this time as president to encourage all citizens of the BVI to be safe and follow all protocols as we grapple with COVID-19 pandemic. I offer my sincere condolences to all persons who have lost loved ones during this time. Our prayers and thoughts are with you. Viewers, that was newly elected president of the Lions Club of Tortola, uh, Mr. Kevin Foy. Now, Lions are men and women who identify needs within their communities and volunteer their services by working together to fulfill those needs. The club's purpose is to organize, charter, and supervise service clubs to be known as Lions Clubs, to also coordinate the activities and standardize the administration of Lion Clubs to create and foster a spirit of understanding among the peoples of the world, also to promote the principles of good government and good citizenship, to take an active interest in the civic, cultural, social aspects of any society. Uh, Jovan, we see another young professional and, of course, a young distinguished gentleman, Mr. Kevin Foy, stepping up to the mantle once again. Absolutely. And of course, we want to congratulate him. When you think about Kevin, he's definitely someone who is selfless and really stretches himself across to ensure the betterment of the BVI. Not only is he general manager of Caribbean Sellers Limited, but he's also now the president of the Lions Club. Uh, but in addition to that, the premier of Youth Parliament yes, and indeed. Daddy, a very involved Daddy. So we just want to congratulate him for being exceptional in whatever he puts his mind to do and wish him all the best in this role. Now, if you are still ahead, a 28-year-old man who escaped in January during a major drug bust has now been arrested and charged. An International Literacy Day uh, to feature video as part of the activities. We have all the details coming right after this commercial break, so stick with us. The wait is over. CCT Fire is here. Experience ultra-fast downloads, seamless streaming, and even more reliable connectivity on an all-new fire-blazing, super-fast CCT Fire Network. CCT Fire, bring it home and upgrade today. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, new uh, details coming out of the January 19th drug bust in Brandywine Bay. Now, 28-year-old Sean Massacre of East End, East End sorry, was slapped with two charges in the police confiscation of over 200 kilos uh, of cocaine that was seized back in January. The accused initially had made good his escape. Now, viewers, according to official reports, officers of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force while on mobile patrol, noticed a power boat speeding towards the dock in that area. They subsequently witnessed persons on the boat transporting items to a white Kia rental vehicle and a red Suzuki Grand Vitara parked at the dock. 
Now, after trailing them for some time, police eventually intercepted one of the rental vehicles and a subsequent search resulted in a large quantity of cocaine being uncovered. Now, viewers, a similar attempt was made on the second vehicle, but not before the driver made good his escape. A search of that vehicle also unearthed more of the illegal substance. Police also reported that an undisclosed amount of cannabis was also uncovered during the operation and the vessel connected to the operations was also seized by the officers. Now, government employee, as you're seeing on your screen viewers, Mr. Devon Bedford of Harrigan Estate was then arrested and charged on location and eventually uh, arrested, sorry, on location, but eventually charged with unlawful possession and the possession with intent to supply with other persons unknown. On Friday, July 16th, however, Mr. Sean Massacut was charged for possession of uh, a controlled drug with intent to supply and being concerned with the supply of a concerned, a controlled drug. Sorry, he appeared before the magistrate's court and was offered bail. Now, to the same tune of charges, on June 30th, police arrested and charged Mr. John Calfat, 46 year old, for uttering forged documents. He appeared before the magistrate's court and was placed on remand. Then on July 16th, police arrested and charged Mr. Zadi Daniel, a native of St. Vincent, residing in Parham Town, for importation of a controlled drug and overstaying land permit. He, was, he pleaded guilty, sorry, before the magistrate's court and was further remanded until sentencing in August. The police seems to have their hands full. But of course, we want to continue to wish them all the best as they continue to do great work in the community. Indeed, continuing on on the local scene, Secretary General of the BVI National Commission of UNESCO, Dr. Allison Flax Archer, has said the commission will be accepting videos as part of the visual piece in observance of International Literacy Day. Dr. Allison Flax Archer said the COVID-19 pandemic has forced a new way of learning at an extraordinary degree and is a stark reminder of the significant importance of literacy for all. Now, the Secretary General said, and I quote, as we look forward and implement recovery, my hope is that we embrace the positive that has been developed because of our internal, sorry, international discomfort to change and that we would renew our educational plans personally and professionally. Dr. Archer also added, narrowing the digital divide at this time can only be a positive as it affords the brilliant opportunity of strengthening links in the Virgin Islands and throughout the world to educational opportunities. I am simply thrilled. Now persons desirous of being a part of the international literacy video should submit a 30 second or less video on the theme literacy for a human centered recovery, narrowing the digital divide. Videos should also be taped horizontally and in a properly lit area. Submissions should be sent to aflax-archer at gov.vg by August 25th. Now, the final video will be posted by the government's Facebook page on the International Literacy Day, which is celebrated on September 8th. International Literacy Day takes place, as we said, on September 8th every year to raise awareness and concern for literacy problems that exist within our own local communities as well as globally. International Literacy Day was founded and proclaimed by the United Education National uh, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, in 1966 to remind the public of the importance of literacy as a matter of dignity and human rights. International Literacy Day brings ownership of the challenges of literacy back home to local communities where literacy begins, one person at a time. Uh, definitely some great news as we celebrate uh, International Literacy Day. We want to encourage persons and especially our students to support this initiative and be a part of the competition. Viewers, up next, 192 active COVID-19 cases in the USVI as the presence of the Delta variant is confirmed in the U.S. territory and China rebuffs uh, the World Health Organization's term to further COVID-19 origins study. All this and so much more. After a word from our sponsors, you're watching 284 News. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? 
contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Brilliant Hands and Minds Tutoring Services. One-on-one -on -one tutorials in math and English, intense homework assistance, academic enrichment, school projects, effective communication and public speaking development, sign language for adults and children on Saturdays only. Registered with the Virgin Islands High School Certificate Program, Brilliant Hands and Minds can help you too. Offering intense curriculum-based training to help you or your loved ones get their high school diploma. It's time to make your family's education a number one priority. Hurry, space is limited. Brilliant Hands and Minds Learning Center. We are the trained education professionals. Viewers, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Of course, now we pan across to the U.S. Virgin Islands. The VI Consortium has reported that the U.S. Virgin Islands active COVID-19 cases grew by 27 in one day from 165 to 192 active cases between Tuesday and Wednesday, according to the VI Department of Health. Now, the surge comes as health officials confirm the presence of the Delta variant in the U.S. Virgin Islands. They say, and I quote, with this surge in positive cases, there is a greater chance for the virus to mutate. Identifying this variant is one, uh, in one district only indicates to us that it has already covered the whole territory and inter-island travel heightens the spread, Director of Health uh, said Wednesday. Now, as of Wednesday, there were 192 active COVID cases in the USVI, 63 on St. Croix, 125 on St. Thomas, and four on St. John. The risk factors in the territory were close contact and community spread, according to the Department of Health data. Now, as of Monday, there were 16 COVID patients at the territory's hospitals within the Schneider Regional Medical uh, Center, ac accounting for 11, and the Juan F. Louis Hospital, 5. Now, at least two patients were ventilated as well, one at the Juan F. Louis Hospital. Scientists say the Delta COVID strain, also known as the B1657, Two variant appears, sorry, that's B1617 variant appears to have two advantages over early forms of the virus. It is, of course, more infectious and appears to uh, be more effective at evading vaccines, though people who are fully vaccinated have significant protection against COVID 19. The strain is a 40 to 80 percent more contagious than the alpha variant. Wow. Just last month, viewers, about uh, half of adults infected in an outbreak of the Delta variant in Israel were fully inoculated with the Pfizer uh, vaccine. This uh, reality prompted uh, the Israel government to impose, reimpose an indoor mask requirement and other measures to contain the highly transmittable uh, strain. Now, USBI Governor Albert Bryan on Monday encouraged residents to take precautions and follow COVID-19 guidelines. He said, also pushed for hard vaccination and said if COVID-19 numbers remain elevated, restrictions would be reintroduced. Among them is a decreased number in the capacity of gatherings. As of Monday, 48.1% of the USVI population is vaccinated against COVID-19, which equates to a population of number, sorry, of 38,220 residents. Of course, the Department of Health said 70% of the population needs to be vaccinated in order to achieve herd immunity. Mr. Bryan also said the COVID-19 task force will be uh, stricter in enforcing rules. He additionally said the administration has worked with the public, including owners of establishments such as bars and restaurants, to be more uh, lenient when COVID-19 numbers are trending lower. However, with the positive cases rising and the Delta variant afoot in the territory of the USVI, leniency is being abandoned, at least for now. More active enforcement, according to the governor of the USVI, uh, Albert Bryan. Uh, definitely some interesting comments there, Ron. I know Delta, of course, it originated based on what we know in India, moved to Great Britain, moved on to the United States, but then certainly has made its way down to the region. Yes. Uh, once we saw the aggressive spread in the territory, I think one of the safest things to assume at that point was that the Delta variant was present in yes. the territory. And I think what's really challenging for the world over to accept about this particular uh, mutation is the fact that just as we were beginning to recover and get back to some semblance of normalcy, uh, this, this, this new variant uh, caused a lot of havoc. Um, and 
it's, it's a challenge, Ron. It's very difficult because, like we said, the BVI was finally in a place where we were, we were willing to move forward. We have to be careful with this one, uh, for sure. I know a lot of experts are very uh, concerned about the Delta variant, especially like you mentioned, the fact that the vaccine don't necessarily protect uh, in its full efficacy against the new variants. Uh, so viewers, again, just cautioning everyone in the territory even though we are yet to confirm whether or not our samples are positive for the Delta variant, do the right thing, abide by those protocols as we continue to beat this virus. Now, viewers, we're going to go to a very quick commercial break, but when we come back, China is now rebuffing um, the World Health Organization's claim to do another origin study about, of course, the origin of COVID-19. So stick with us. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man. I've been looking for this for weeks. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, international headlines are now saying that China cannot accept the World Health Organization's plan for the second phase of the study into the origins of COVID-19. This is according to a senior Chinese health official uh, who said that on Thursday. Now, Zheng, the vice minister of the uh, National Health Commission, said he was, and I quote, rather taken aback, end of quote, that the plan includes further investigation of the theory that the virus might have leaked from a Chinese lab. He dismissed the lab leak idea as a rumor that runs counter to common sense and science. He said, and I quote, it is impossible for us to accept such an origin tracing plan. This is what he said at a news conference called to address the COVID-19 origins issue. Now viewers, the search for where the virus came from has become a diplomatic issue that has fueled China's deteriorating relations with the U.S and many American allies. The U.S. and others say that China has not been transparent about what happened in the early days of the pandemic. China accuses critics of seeking to blame it for the pandemic and politicizing an issue that should be left to scientists. Now, Viris Tedros, um, out of the World Health Organization, acknowledged last week that there has been a premature push after the first phase of the study to rule out the theory that the virus might have escaped from a Chinese government lab in Wuhan, the city, of course, where the disease was first detected in late 2019. Most experts think, don't think, sorry, most experts do not think a lab leak is likely the cause. The question is whether the possibility is so remote that it should be dropped or whether it merits further study. The first phase was conducted earlier this year by an international team of scientists who came to Wuhan to work with their Chinese counterparts. The team was accused of bowing to demands from the Chinese side after it initially indicated that further study was not necessary. Now, Zheng said that the Wuhan lab has no virus that can directly infect humans and noted that the World Health Organization team concluded that a lab leak was highly unlikely. He added that speculation that staff and graduate students at the lab had been infected and might have started the spread of the virus in the city was also untrue. Young, uh, the director of the Biosafety Lab in Wuhan Institute of Virology, said that they had not stored or studied the new coronavirus before the outbreak. They said, and I quote, It needs to be emphasized that the Wuhan Institute of Virology has never designed, made, or leaked the novel coronavirus. Now, viewers, the World Health Organization team concluded that the virus most likely jumped from animals to humans, preferably from bats to an intermediate animal. The experts visited markets in Wuhan that had sold live animals sorry, and recommended further study of the farms that supplied the market. Ron, I think as we dive deeper into this pandemic, it's really important for us to continue to examine really what happened. I know that's a question being asked by many leaders and countries, persons across the world, um, and I think figuring out the origin will most certainly help us uh, to figure out how best to deal with uh, this crisis. Indeed, uh, viewers, that is it. All the time we have, of course, thank you so much for tuning in to our news roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at 284media.com 
And of course, like us on Facebook at Tweet for Media and Tweet for BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Ron Grant. And my name is Yvonne Wilson, wishing you a terrific night. Join us again tomorrow for more news.